You can charge most common rechargeable batteries using the CineLink XY-SK120 backboost converter like lead acid battery, lithium iron phosphate battery, lithium ion battery, nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium, and also USB devices like cell phones. First, you must determine the charging voltage of your battery. Different types and different voltage rating have also different charging voltage. There are several online resources that you can refer to as your guide for charging voltage and charging current of batteries. For the most common 6 volt lead acid battery, the charging voltage is between 6.9 volts and 7.5 volts. Better stay at flat 7.0 volts to avoid gassing and damage to the battery. For the popular 3.6 volt lithium ion battery, the charging voltage is 4.2 volts per cell. Charging beyond 4.2 volts can lead to overcharging and potential damage and hazards. For the newer 3.2 volt lithium iron pusspate, the charging voltage is between 3.5 volts and 3.65 volts per cell. To prevent damage and ensure optimal battery performance and longevity, don't go beyond 3.65 volts. Now you know the charging voltage of your batteries, the second step is to set the charging voltage on the converter. If the converter is already on and is set on output voltage, just turn the knob to the desired voltage. If the converter is not ready, be sure to set the output voltage on the display by pressing SW button. The SW button toggles between input and output voltage. Be sure you can distinguish between the input and output output voltage. The word in is flashing on the display if the displayed value is the input voltage. Proceed setting the output voltage which is your charging voltage by turning and pushing the knobs until you get the desired value. Third, proceed connect the terminals of the converter to the corresponding terminals of the battery. The converter will start charging and you can notice on the display the current initially goes up where the voltage goes down below the set voltage. However, after a while the voltage will stabilize back to its set value. Fourth, as soon as the charging reaches about 85% of the battery's capacity, charging will slow down. This is trickle charging and it's normal to protect the battery. The charging light is already off. It means uh, charging is already done. And look at the display here. It stops already or it's already on trickle charging. This is the reason why we are asked to charge our cell phone and other devices up to 85% only. We can either continue charging up to 100% or stop the charging when trickle charging starts. We will know charging is complete when the battery stops drawing current as indicated on the display, the second row in yellow, and when the capacity reaches the desired value in ampere hour as shown in the third row on the display. Or we can set the overcapacity protection so that the converter automatically stops when the maximum charging capacity is reached. This is how to set overcapacity protection or OAS on the converter setting. Long press I set button to enter the data group setting. In my case, I use the default data group which is CD0. Navigate to OAH by pressing either VSET or I set button. If the OAH is not yet activated, just short press the power button and turn the knob to set the value. Take note, it says here AH, that's ampere hour. 5000 milliamperes is 5 ampere hours. This is 10 milliampere hour. <laughs> okay. There are also other settings for battery charging like BTF which set the charging cutoff current. This is off by default because you don't need to set it. The converter automatically sets the charging current. But just in case you want to set the maximum charging current of your battery, you can set it here. This is found on the system parameter settings, short press SW, press either VSET or ISET to navigate to BTF, 
To turn it on, just short press the power button and turn the knob to desired value. For lead acid battery, the recommended charging current is 10 to 30% of its capacity. This is 4 ampere hour battery, so the charging current must not exceed 1.2 amperes. Other settings to protect the battery during charging is to monitor the temperature of the battery. This converter has external temperature sensor. This is a 10K NTC sensor connected to the motherboard of the converter. Attach the probe to the body of the battery. Then set the desired temperature value as its cutoff temperature, meaning charging will stop if the temperature of the battery exceeds the set value. The setting is found on the data group setting. Again, long press I set to enter the data group and navigate to ATP or external temperature protection. Short press power button if the ATP is off and start to set the value by turning the knob. What is the temperature value? The optimal performance range for lead acid batteries is between 20 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius, 0 to 45 degrees for lithium ion and lithium iron phosphate. After setting the value, long press I set or SW to save the settings and exit. So, actually, uh, the battery is so hot already, so there's an alarm, ATP. It means our cutoff, which is 25 degrees Celsius, has been. Uh, um, breaks actually the temperature of the battery goes up over 30 degrees so it already breaks our uh, cap off at 25 degrees that's why the end converter automatically turns off and you can see here ATP even if you turn that again on it will not turn on because of the ATP setting So I'm actually uh, using another battery because the previous one uh, was defective. So I'll try to check if it works now. Under normal charging, we can monitor the charging status of the battery. Um, as of now, uh, we already charged the battery for more than two hours. Then that's two hours and 50 minutes. And the battery is maintaining a 30 degree centigrade temperature. It's 0.650 watts, the uh, uh, charging power that it received. It's 0.193 ampere hours. Again, remember this is a 4.5 ampere hour battery. So it's still far from being full charged. If during charging the battery is not getting hotter or just staying warm, then you don't need to set up the temperature sensor. That's all on how to charge row batteries using the Sinilink XY-SK120 backboost converter. If you are charging USB devices like cell phones, always set the charging voltage to 5 volts because the rated voltage of any USB charger is only at 5 volts. Check this video here to know more how to charge devices using this converter. Also watch this video to know more about how to operate this converter if you have questions please comment below and as a member of this channel you can send me private messages and take body members